Good afternoon, my fine friends. Some might say good evening. They might be correct about that. Uh, welcome to frame 105 of Me 1 vs. Me 2 Snooker. Ah, oh, I forgot again. What's wrong with me? Ah, oh, the audio files will be the audio files will be disgusted with me. Why is the my why is my computer making a noise? Ah, oh, Chris Evans has put the bloody speaker on in the thing he was messing around with it I have to sort that out oh that's going to be no good if it's going to do that all the way through can you hear me yeah it's, that's working at least but he's put the oh. are you watching Chris Evans not that one can you not hear me Oh, hold on. I'm going to start. I'm going to turn off and start again. Hold on. Hello, welcome back. Hello. Welcome to frame 105 of Me 1 versus Me 2 Snooker. Hopefully it's working. We just had a bit of a an issue. Uh, hopefully the stuff isn't coming. Chris, Chris Evans, not that one, has been been along to check it's all right hopefully the sound isn't coming out of the computer anymore we'll see no it is i'm just gonna text him sorry it doesn't really matter but you can probably hear that can't you he listen oh chris is on it there we go um because he messed around with it the other day and i told him he was an idiot and this is what happens he makes me look like a fool. He's sitting there in his Welsh palace, or oh, built on all of the. He has to keep all the money from the Twitch and stuff. He said for tax reasons, and then now he lives in Cardiff Castle. He's sitting there with a big gold crown on. Apparently, he says he just won the lottery or something. Anyway, welcome to another episode of uh, Me One versus Me Two Snooker. It's frame one hundred and five. We're here in the uh, Salvio Dino. Arena. I hardly need to tell you that uh, Salvio Dino. I liked him because his uh, his uh, name is like a dinosaur. He was a Brazilian writer and politician uh, who served as a congressman. Died today. Um, very sad to see him go. He was. Uh, I think he was pretty old. He was born in thirty two. It's not to, not a bad knock. Um, uh, Jazz Raj's uh, family got in touch to say they did not want to be associated with the podcast. Which I, I think Jazz Raj would have liked to have been associated. Uh, and uh, just letting Chris know, I think it's all right. Now, thank you very much to Chris Evans. He's a wonderful man. Um, and anyone who anyone who maligns him, not he's not that one. Better come through me, because I will defend that man. Anyone who's critical of him at all, I will defend them to it to the hilt. He should hang around though, just in case the other microphones don't work. If that's the standard of how things are going. So, um, welcome. Uh, I've had a great weekend. If you're interested, uh, my my parents-in-law looked after the kids for Saturday evening and or nearly all of Sunday, and uh, that was the best thing that's ever happened to me. I can't tell you. I slept. I was in bed till midday. Had no worries. D don't have kids. No, do have kids, just so you can appreciate how great it is to lie until till twelve o'clock once every five fucking years. Still a bit tired, though, because they were back last night and um, kept on waking up in the night. They're a pair of, they're a pair of dicks. Oh, the older ones, all right. It's the little one I could do without. Uh, and uh, last night, we, uh, me and Ali, uh, who you may know from uh, Lee and, uh, Ali and Herring's, keep on calling it Lee and Herring's Twitch of Fun. I don't know why. Ali and Herring's Twitch of Fun. Um, we performed at the Clapham Grand together. It was our first uh, live appearance on stage in front of an audience. There was an audience there of uh, 200 people in the 2000 seat venue. Um, social distancing, obviously. And uh, first gig since 87, I think we've done together. We just decided to go ad hoc, see how it went. You can watch it on YouTube if you really want to. Uh, but please do donate to the uh, Saving the Venues, what you might call it that uh, you can see it on my Twitter feed if you go there now. There's a link. Uh, and uh, there says that. Also, uh, the Stone Clearing Kickstarter is 
nearing its end. You ball bags will be delighted to hear that we're struggling a little bit. It's picked up. We've just gone over £13,000. We need to get £20,000 by Friday evening or the stone clearing membership thing will explode. I would just say this to you ball bags. Uh, if you wanted, you could pay £250 and advertise on the stone clearing podcast saying how shit it is and how snooker is better. 250 quid and you get all the other stuff as well. Uh, 150 quid, you can now get a message from me to thank you for taking part. Uh, or like I'll do a, a birthday message for you or something like that. Uh, also, you could get... A, the membership cards are beautiful and there will be similarly ball bag ones coming up when we start the snooker one. You could get those stone clear ones and then burn them in front of a stone clear uh, stone clear fan's face. So there's lots of ways you could help us out. My plan is if we hit the target... For stone clearing, which is twenty thousand pounds, it's a lot. It was too much. We shouldn't have gone that high. Um, we'll probably do a lower target for snooker. And here's the good news: if we make the money on the first one, we will give all the money we make that's profit on the second one to the same charity that I just did that gig for last night. So we, we can raise money for live venues, comedy venues, to try and keep them going. Once all of this is over, they can still operate. Uh, the stands, which are the, some of the finest comedy clubs in the world in Newcastle, Glasgow and Edinburgh, are in danger of closing. And if they're going to close, I just don't know what is going to be open. So if you want to hang on for that and give some money to that, that will go to charity. But only if the other one's successful, because I don't think we can afford to do one just for charity if the other one doesn't work out. But we'll see. We'll see how it works out. So go to rahalastapa.co.uk slash kickstarter if you want to join in with that kickstarter. Um, the snooker stuff is looking fantastic if you want to hold out for the snooker stuff. But maybe just chuck a few quid in just to keep the stone clearing fraternity happy. You know, the thing is, if you defeat them too much, they may be just destroyed by that and not be able to come back. Um, let's see how it's going. We'll t I'll tell you where it is now. We'll see where it is by the end of this broadcast. We're on 279 backers, which is pretty good. I think we need about 420 is my guess. Uh, and it's £13,162. It's about £2,000 a day it's coming, turning into now. So good luck with that. You know, it always picks up at the end. I think it's going to be an exciting finish. That's my guess for that, as I'm sure it will be today, because we're not here to talk about Kickstarters or Coventrilocus dummies unless they're controlling one of the players. We're here to talk about Me 1 versus Me 2 snooker. Uh, we put two of these frames out as videos. I hope the people who watch the videos have listened to the first 102 frames. I hope if you're watching at home, you've listened to the first 102 frames. We're 100, frame 103. Very, very close. Just nipped to the end by Me 1. Frame 104, ex even closer and nipped by one point by Me 1 right at the end. So Me 1 has won both the televised... Uh, tournaments. Maybe the cameras are putting me too off. He never liked the idea of being filmed, I have to say. Um, and uh, also me won, also on a massive role having won the Elite tournament as well uh, that we've concluded back at the beginning of August. So um, when I got back from holiday. So uh, you know, it's it's pretty exciting stuff for me one. I don't want to waste too much of your time faffing about. So let's Get on with the show. Uh, let's talk to. Uh, we only really got 128 people watching. Is that what? Is this what's 135? Is that what's become of us? I remember when this place was. T is it just because the virus is not so bad now? People are going and doing normal things. What a palaver! What a terrible palaver it is. Um, so. Uh, there's lots coming up tomorrow. I won't be doing Stuka because I'm doing Stevie Martin. Not Steve Martin. Stevie Martin. She's a comedian as well. But she's a female comedian. And uh, she has a uh, Twitch channel, which is 5TVM. So F5 and the number 5, then T-E-V-I-E-M. Go and follow her. I'm doing it live tomorrow. Her book club is a lot of fun. We talk about a book that doesn't exist, I think is the idea. Don't want to give away the secrets. Uh, and uh, then Rahala Stapa this week is at 3pm on Wednesday as I'm talking to someone in uh, America it's Maria Konnikova who's a uh, psychologist and a poker player and a writer and she has this very interesting book she's written called The Big Bluff uh, which I'm just nearly finished writing sorry re reading that would be a big bluff if she got me to write it she will be the guest on Wednesday if we get an enough people putting money into the kickstarter on wednesday night i may do some special stuff 
we might have a little fundraiser thing just to try and encourage people to give to the Kickstarter because I think it will need just a little punch up. Uh, but uh, I, the re reason we're trying to raise this money is to help us to make the sitcom of Everything Happens for No Reason, which is um, a alternate universe sitcom that I wrote for Channel Four initially that they didn't want in the end wrongly. Um, so on Wednesday, if we're up to sixteen thousand five hundred pounds by Wednesday, which will still leave us a mountain to climb then um, I will read the first chapter of the book version that I'm writing, or the, the, as far as I've got with the book, which isn't very far, but that will become a sitcom uh, at some point. It was going to be this year, but I think due to the course of events, it will hopefully be sometime in 2021. We need to get studios and actors booked and all sorts of things. Also, I need to write the scripts. So uh, there'll be a series of six of those if we uh, can claw enough money together. Which we're doing from the adverts for Rahalaspa and so on. We're making a bit of money there, but uh, advertising revenue has dropped quite significantly as a result of that COVID thing. I don't know if you heard about it. Uh, so not many people are advertising, not as many people are advertising. So it'd be lovely if you could help out if that's what you wanted to do. And I think this Kickstarter will be the only opportunity to help us because the other Kickstarter. Well, I guess if we don't make make this one, the, ne the next one might be for us, not for charity, but we'll see. Or maybe we'll do a bit of both. And to be honest, we might do a bit of both with this first one as well. Because, you know, we're nice guys here. Here at Sky Potato and Twitch. RK Herring on Twitch. So do check us out tomorrow on Stevie uh, Martin's channel. And um, let's get on with the snooker. So I don't know who to talk to first. I guess we should... Check in with me one. He's become a bit conceited and arrogant having won so many games in a row, so many frames in a row. Um, he's been, I would say, a little bit lucky. It, both of those frames could have gone the other way. It's currently 48 to me one, 49 to me two. There's an actual fly. Uh, living fly flying around in here. Um, and uh, it could ease so easily have been... Uh, 46, 51, couldn't it? That's the that's the difference that those black balls have made at uh, the end of the frames. So um, it's been exciting. I'm hoping we keep the standard of snooker up. I've got two pairs of glasses on, especially. Let's. I think Miwon's just sitting down in a chair. Let's go over to, to see. Oh, you oh, was I on? I was on Miwon already, was I? You made me look a... Chris Evans again. What a fucking idiot. He's made me look like a buffoon. He put me on the... Put me on the wrong camera. Okay. Uh, me one, I think, is just sitting down. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, there he is. Uh, hello, Richard. Yeah, it's good to uh, good to be back. Oh, I've got a bit of an itch on my shoulder. Ah. Uh, have to say, uh, me one, I... Sorry, have to say, me one, I do like um, the shirt you're wearing there. Very nice shirt. Thank you, Rich. I like yours too. Yeah, it's good. You know, it's nice that you've dressed up a bit. I know in lockdown, Richard, I know a lot of the players start getting very casual. Um, I'm hoping we'll go back to suits uh, very soon and be wearing suits probably. Uh, but we have to work our way up to it. That fly is now... It's a living fly. He's come to meet the dead fly. That's Gwendolyn Fly from... Ali and Harry's Twitch of Fun. There's Brian Wasp from... <sighs> What's become of me? What's become of me? I used to be on the telly. I used to be on the proper telly. Um, and, uh, yeah, so uh, what were we saying? Uh, oh, you, you like... Uh, well, Okay, yeah, that was... I was me one then. Yeah, you were me one then. Yeah, we... Oh, what a terrible... It's got confu It's got all confused about which one's which. Well, it's because we were wearing the same shirt, Rich. It's embarrassing. I guess that is. I Because I'm wearing the same shirt as you, I, for a moment, I thought I was you. And the cameraman clearly thought we were each other. And that led to that confusion. So let's just get back to it. How are you feeling about the snooker? Let's talk about that. Well, Rich, um, I'm very excited. If I win today, we're back at parity. And that is a very exciting thing for me. Having slipped a little bit behind. I was ahead, I think, for a long time, wasn't I? And then I've slipped a little bit behind. Uh, I could still be the first to the best of 100. I don't quite... I think I need to go back through the records. Sorry. I think I need to go back through the records. This is me, Rich Herring, speaking now. To um, check that that's right. Because it feels like we've done more than 105... Well, it's, it feels like the score should be higher if we've done 105 frames. Even though three or four were with me, me three. Uh, but that's just a little editorial note. You're confusing a lot of people and, and sending them away from the channel, Richard. If anything, uh, me one, there are more people watching. Okay, fair enough. And when I say more, 153. It's not that many, is it? No. Uh, but, so yeah, you know, I know some people felt I've gone, uh, you know, maybe it's gone to my head a bit, the victories, being the best elite player, um, being the reigning champion of champions, uh, and also then winning two frames, clearly, easily win beating me to 
humiliating him. I don't think that's fair, me one. I, I don't, you know, me two can speak for himself. He'll be here shortly, but I do feel that either of those rounds could have gone either way. That was what made them so exciting, but they didn't, Richard. That I won. I just want to say I've had a wonderful weekend without the kids. Uh, my kids, like yours, have been to the in-laws. I've just been in bed with my wife, making sweet love, hopefully making another little baby to add to the collection of babies I've got. I don't know what Me Too's been doing. I didn't see him around all weekend, but uh, I've had a wonderful, wonderful time of love making with my beautiful wife, uh, free from the danger of children walking in and seeing the disgusting things me and my wife get up to. Well, I, you know, I don't. We, we want to talk about the snooker, mate. We don't want to talk about that. I don't, don't think that's appropriate. Um, I think Me Too's just coming into the commentary room. Let's just see if he's sitting down. Yeah, he's just sat down there. I don't know if you saw, I don't know if the camera's caught that. And um, me, one must have just got up and left. Uh, how was your weekend, me too, Richard? Uh, as, um, as it has been in lockdown, um, I just sit in my basement waiting for the snooker to come back. Um, sometimes it comes along, sometimes it doesn't. All the lockdown played very badly. I know I've had a terrible run of form. I haven't done well in any of the tournaments. Uh, I've lost the last two frames. I'm aware. It's taken a lot out of me, Richard. Um, maybe I've thrown them like Ronnie O'Sullivan sometimes does, but what I haven't done is won them like Ronnie O'Sullivan sometimes does. Can we not talk about two-player snooker here? Um, I was talking about Ronnie O'Sullivan playing himself. Uh, that's the only Ronnie O'Sullivan. Sometimes he's playing himself and he throws it. Sometimes he plays himself and he really excels, um, often in the same match, actually. And uh, that's what I love about him as a self-playing snooker player. I do not watch his two-player snooker well that's good that's fine i'll accept that then um and are you worried about losing today i'm yeah I've, i'm honest richard i think you know it's he's got under my skin me one um i as you may know i've had a romantic attachment to his wife um it she has chosen to stay with him even though i think most people watching this by now know what what a he seems like a nice guy you know lots of guys like this lots of family men they seem like nice guys but underneath they're selfish, there's something cold, something psychopathic about them. She should have come to me, but uh, I, I can wait. I can wait an eternity. And while I'm waiting, all I can do, waiting for the love of my life to find me, all I can do is win at snooker. That's all That's that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to win today from her, though she won't know it. She doesn't watch this. And also for my sick fans in hospital many of them th two years old now a lot of them very very young kids got, have got into me one versus me snooker over the lockdown um they won't have known the history of it they've only seen just the most recent ones and they like me maybe because they didn't see what you're like i mean in the early frames you were horrible really i don't think that's fair richard i think i had a lot of stuff to struggle through and often when someone's acting up it's because they're they're hurting inside and snooker's my life. I just hope I can win today. That's all I can hope. Wow, well, we're seeing another side of me too that I um, I was not aware, really aware of before. It's kind of beautiful. Um, I hope he can... I mean, he's always been my favourite. I mean, I liked him when he was horrible, to be fair. Uh, I much prefer him to me one who I just found obsequious. I'm in no control. I would love me too to win every frame if it was up to me. But it's not up to me. It's up to the guys themselves. Let's head over to commentator one, commentator two. We've got a round 152 people in the in the room watching this. Don't forget to subscribe with Amazon Prime, especially if you uh, have let that slip. Uh, AX Pets, Ax Pets, has just done that for four months with Prime. You can do it with money, but do it with Prime. Save your money for proper things. Uh, use your Amazon Prime memberships, link your Twitch Prime account, and you can give us five pounds every month, of which we get three pound fifty every month. Started off pretty well. It's gone down a bit. I don't think that's a reflection of the quality of the show. So uh, let's head over to Commentator 1, Commentator 2 in the Salvio Dino Arena here in Hertfordshire. Not in Brazil, as you might imagine. Here we go. Thank you, Richard. Just checking you at home can hear us before I head. The players head across. Thank you, Dandy McH, as always, uh, and the Steve Brads in the chat room, and, uh, and the other moderator as well. Um, I don't learn all the names. I'm commentator one, and 
he has put out a beautiful score. We're here in the Salvio Dino Arena. It's me one to break. And he's not messing around. He's taking off his reading glasses. And here we go. A little bit less light. Me one wants a bit more light. He sends a referee one or two over to turn on more light. And that's fair enough. I hope that illuminates it more for you. And here he goes. He's braked. And he's gone in off. He's gone in off, ladies and gentlemen. It's his signature move. Calculating, calculating, me one, zero, me two, four. So me two has not yet even stepped up to the old green board and finds himself in the lead. Can he get more balls in? He can. He's potted a beautiful red and come across. I think he won't quite get on this black. But, uh, yeah, there's no way that's going in anywhere. So he might just try and get the cue ball down the other end of the table. Hasn't really succeeded with that, but the camber takes the ball a little out of the way, and Me Too finds himself 5 0 up. Surely an unassailable lead. Me One is going to really have to pull something out of the bag here. Oh, and does he? The sand of snooker remains incredibly high here, ladies and gentlemen. No messing. He's going for the pink. I think he could go for the black, but he's decided the pink is the better option. Rightly so, it seems, as that has gone, it's been sunk and. What do I know? He's going to, going to have to go on the black spot because the pink spot is covered. And he's looking at those reds. He thinks that one of those could go down with a little crack. Is he right? Yes, he is right. I don't know if that was the one he was thinking, but he's on a break of eight and he's right on the black. And this is a four ball break. Almost from the off. Me too might not go back to the table here. To the board, I mean. Me one has a break of 30, 15. Can he make it 16? He's standing on the green screen. He can. Oh, if he just hit that a bit softer, we could be in a very different world here. He got his break of 30, 14, 15. Very good. But unfortunately, he's given away seven there by potting the black. The black and the pink now right next to each other. Calculating, calculating, me one, 15, me two, 12. And me two. Finds himself back in the game. We could have been buried there if that black had just rolled a little bit quite slower. And me two tries to pop the red. Oh, that was unlucky. That was a nice shot. Me one's not gonna miss that one and he hasn't. Is he gonna go in off? No, he's timed it brilliantly. He's got the blue. Look at the potting in this game. It's absolutely phenomenal, mainly from me one. But me two has potted one red as well. Don't forget that. Break of six. Oh, I think if he got that, he might have gone in off. But a lovely break of six takes me one to 21. It's 21 12, a palindromic score. And me two needs to pull something out of the bag here. And that was lovely. That was a lovely little plant. It was like a rhododendron, a lovely little plant. There's some snooker humor there for you. I think uh, me too, maybe a little bit screwed here, but this is a nice idea. As he, as it paid off, me too gets one point. Calculating, calculating, me one, 21, me two, 13, me one. No, it hasn't worked. Me one actually has a very clear shot into the center pocket, which he misses uncharacteristic and that could be the mistake that lets me two back into this me too again risky shot nearly went in off but uh, did not do so me one it's a little bit too slow with the camber of this table and me too straight there and he's not gonna miss that he's up the table I think he forgot the black and the Pink are two really too close together to be any use to anyone. He's going yellow. Oh, and how unlucky. He potted that yellow, but he also potted the brown. Gives away four. Calculating, calculating. Me one, 25. Me two, 14. So is this going to be the first time that uh, one of the players gets way ahead in filmed frames? It's a free ball because that is uh, all the reds are blocked me one can choose any of the red any of the colors as a red he's gone for the brown he's not potted it or has he no 
Me too. We'll just wax it, hopes for the best. That's quite good, unless he pots the black. Close there, me one. Nicely potted. The black looks taste. Ow! It's just banged his elbow on the. Ow! Don't know why I'm shouting out. Ow! It's almost like I can feel the pain. Ah! Oh, a me one. Giving himself a right jangle all down his arm. They caught his funny bone. I don't know why it's called that. There's nothing funny about the pain he is currently feeling. That cannot help. No, well, that was. After that, it was kind of unlikely he was going to get that. Look at him, he's still trying to shake off the pain. Me too, not in any pain. Can he take advantage here? Me one. Look, manfully. Look at that, the pain, if anything, has spurred him on to more success. He's going for the brown. Oh! And there's been so much bad luck for both players. After some brilliant play, he pots the brown, but unfortunately pots the black. So Miwon gets that one point, but uh, gives away seven again. So he's up to 27, and me too, courtesy, I have to say, of a fair amount of fouls from Miwon, is uh, on 21. He's got a free ball. He's going for the pink. Can he make this pink work? No. Shame, got nicely on the black. Miwon. Trying the double kiss, it doesn't work for him. Me too. Can he pot it here? This is a bit easier. No. Ooh, comes close to going in off. Me one. Oh, and that was a terrific shot. That's a little bit too hard in the end. Bounced out, jumped out. Like Boris Johnson jumping out the tent. He's pretending to go on holiday in to go to his proper holiday. Me too. Oh, he's missed. He's missed. Four points to me one, and it's a free ball, and I think me one will take that. He's going for the, oh, he's going for the black, which will count as one if he gets it. Oh, he hasn't got it. Me too. He's let off the hook there. Me too. He's gone in off. Four more points to me one, and me one seems to be running away with this now. Certainly been the better player. Been a little bit unlucky this week, I think, in terms of two massive fouls on the, on the black ball. 35 plays 21. Robert Boy seems to have broken down. Me one. Oh, how did he miss that? Will he wake up tonight wondering what happened there? Wishing things had gone differently. Me too. Has gone in off again, and it's not looking good for him. He did seem down before the in the pre-match interview. And me one is not going to... Feel any sympathy for him? Oh, he's still missing though. He's playing some bad snooker. Me too could still come back here. Not playing like that. Although he might have got a snooker. He's got a snooker at least. Me one should get out of it. Oh, but the unusual camber and the usual unusual bounce of the cushions gives me two four points. Calculating, calculating. Me one 39. Me two 25. So there's still. Lots in this, me too. Can he get this red? He might have got it, just look at that, what a shot. That's the kind of me too shot that we've been missing out on today. Just arrogant. He's going for this brown. I'd say he's gonna go in off here if he's not careful. But luckily he missed the shot quite badly. So a point to me too. Calculating, calculating, me one, 39, me two, 26, and me one. Not in the mood to take any shit, but he's slightly lost his his touch here. Me too. Has not. He seems to have found his touch. That was a difficult shot. Me too. Can he double this green? He can, but not into the pocket. But me too. Two points closer. Up to 28. Only 11 between these players now. Me one. Nearly bangs his elbow again. Oh, he's completely missed the ball. And at this level of snooker, that is just always a possibility. Me too. Can he sense a comeback here? You know he can. Look at that. Has he snookered himself in the process of one of the finest shots? I mean, it's close. He's going to come off the cushion. 
Oh, and nearly pots. So, now the cat amongst the pigeons. Was that 32? I think he's on 35 now. Let's see if Andy McH agrees with me. 35 place 39, me one. 22 points on the table. Me one needs to steady himself. And that's just what he needed. Is it? Ooh, lucky. Me one, can he get this blue as well? Not like that. It puts him 43, plays 35, but look what me one has left on here. Me two. Oh, desperately trying to get up the table for the pink and that could be the end of me two's frame. Me one pots that blue. Oh. So me one is on 48, me two is on 35. There's 13 points between these two. Do you know how many points there are on the table? Let's go over to commentator two, who's better at maths than me. I think there's 13 points on the table as well there, commentator one, yeah. So if uh, me two were to pop both of these, it would be a tied frame. And that's just counts as a tie if that happens. Me two maybe wants the snooker, who knows? That wasn't a good shot either way, me one. Just needs to pop this pink to win. Oh, and that was in the pocket and bounced out. Me too. He's decided to go for the draw. If me too can pop this black, we have the closest fra televised frame we've ever seen. Hits that a little bit too. Me too. He's up to 41, me one. 48, maybe me too should have gone for the win. Me one could get the win now. He's got the win, has he? Oh. Me one takes it. It's another thrilling frame. Again, looks in the end, it could have been, been much closer. Than, it looks uh, less close than it was, is what I'm trying to say. Gagglating, gagglating, me one, 55, me two, 41. So, in the age of televised. Snook self playing snooker. It has to be said, me one has wiped the floor with me two. Me two didn't do well in any of the tournaments. He's lost every televised frame so far, including the one that was done for the BBC. I think so. Me two on a very very bad run of form. He was what was he three? He was only three frames clear after having been behind for quite some time. If I, my memory serves me right, and now we're back at parity, forty nine all. The hundred coming up. Even the one on frame one hundred and five. It's coming up. Could happen. Back to you, Richard Herring, in the studio. Hello, hello. Oh, Chris Evans fiddling around with the... Uh... Can you hear me? Good, yeah. Chris uh, Chris Evans was fiddling around with those for some reason. There must have been some problem. I hope you heard everything of the amazing frame. I assume you did. Uh, we've had some technical difficulties for which I apologise sincerely. Um... It shouldn't be happening on my watch, and this is very much my watch. Um, we will try to work it out, make sure it doesn't happen again. When we're playing at this level of sport to this many viewers, I mean there's 170 people watching now, it's gone up. And remember that's just at any one time, maybe up to, sometimes over a thousand people watch this. And then it goes on YouTube and people watch it even more. It's insane. So that was exciting again. Three very, very close frames. Should me too have tried to get a snooker on that pink? Should he have gone for the draw? Should he have gone for the win? It seemed like the cat slightly cowardly to me and it didn't pay off for him. He didn't manage to get the draw. He lost. Let's talk to me too, first of all. I have a lot to say. I think he's just sitting down now as we go to him. Yeah, yeah, there he is sitting down. And yeah, you can, I don't know if you can hear me. I think I might have gone a bit wrong. Yeah, here I am, Richard. Thank you. Um, I I need to get myself out. I've I've fallen into a rut. I've fallen into a hole. 
I need to do something to get myself out of this. Uh, just the sheer number of kids, uh, sick kids who are dying in hospital is just weighing very heavily on me. Um, I've thrown away three frame advantage. That could have seen me through to the end of days. If I just kept up winning at least one in every two. I've lost three in a row. I've got no excuses. I'm a bad snooker player. I don't think that's fair, me too. You've, um, I mean, today, not great. But the last two frames, could you could easily have, you could easily have won... Richard, there's a lot of younger players, a lot of hungry players coming up behind me. Me, 11. Um, me, 7. I was looking through the stats. Uh, me, 7 was uh, was in all three quarterfinals, I think, of, or semifinals of uh, of the tournaments. That's insane. Me, with 11, got into a couple. Um, I was nowhere to be seen. I've got to go and I've got a week, I suppose. You're not doing this tomorrow, so I've got a week to go and think about who I am and what I'm doing. And, uh, no, I I'd like to apologise to my fans. Maybe, you know, maybe, I don't know. I'm, 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 I feel lost. I feel lost in a way. I know before I've, I've felt lost and turned to booze and womanising. I don't feel like that now. I just feel lost. Maybe I need to turn to religion. I don't know. Um, I, I don't know what to say to you. I, I feel like... He, Maybe you need to become nasty again. You When you were nasty, you played pretty well. And I can only be who I am, Richard, and this is who I am. Um, I've lived a life. I've made some mistakes. I hope I've learned from those mistakes. I hope I'm a bigger man. I'm 53 years old now, Richard. I can't be piddling around, playing myself at snooker and not winning at 53. That's too humiliating and embarrassing. I've got to come back. I'm coming back next week. Next Monday, you will see a different me. It won't be. Hopefully, it will be me, but it'll be a different me. Me. It's not like me two one, it, which might be me twenty one. It'll be me still, but it'll be a different me in that I will be playing. I will. I will deport myself more differently than I am doing in the way I am now. Well, I hope so, me too, because it's turned into a bit of a crappy competition if me one just wins every week. And people who've just people who haven't listened to the first hundred and two frames are just going to think you're shit and wonder why you're here. Um, it's 49 frames all. That's what I'm saying. It's all is not lost. We're talking like you've lost this this lifelong tournament. If you all if we all died tomorrow, it would be a draw. So if you win next week and then we all died, you would you would be declared the winner. So you know it's not all is not lost. Let's talk to me one who I imagine will be fucking unbearable. I would have liked me two to win. I'm gonna say, you know, I am. I know it's not right that I should have a preference, but I wanted me two to win. How you doing, me one, Richard? I am fucking delighted. I had that one by the balls. I was so unlucky. You couldn't say I've been lucky, and maybe once or twice with the other frames. I had. I was. I nearly cleared the table, the board rather, um, very early on. If I just slightly nudged that black a little bit less hard, it would just roll towards the pocket. Bang. Six ball break. I don't think he could have come back from that. But instead, I gave him seven points. And then again, seven points a bit later that brought him back into it. And, you know, that was the only good thing about it. It made the frame exciting, but I was always going to win. What a fucking wimp. Go pot in the pink. Why didn't he try and get a snooker behind the black? He could have won it. He decided to go for the draw. Absolutely pathetic, pussy behaviour. I don't want any talking about... The that sort of thing. I mean pussy like a cat. I'm not saying he's like a vagina. Well, in either way, it's not... I don't... This this toxic masculinity, it's not something I'm into. And um, talking about... Using derogatory terms about women to make, to imply a man. If, if a man had the strength of women, I tell you, it would we'd be in a better world. Ah, fuck off. You woke idiot. Look, you're meant to be nice. You're meant to be nice. You've turned into me too. I haven't. This is how I've always been... Uh, I've got a bit older and I'm just not prepared to hold my tongue anymore. The stuff you're saying is bullshit, mate. He's played like a little girl. Me11, who is a female player, is one of the best players in the whole self-playing snooker league. And, and very unlucky not to win two of the tournaments. Um, yeah, but she didn't win any, did she? And I won a whole one. So men are the best. I am the best of the men. And me too is rubbish. And I'm glad he's sleeping in a basement on his own. And his life has fallen apart. I hope he dies. 
I hope I get to play one of the decent me's. Like me seven, I'd play. I'd play me eleven just for the lols. Well, I mean, if you followed this soap opera all the way through, this is an uh, extraordinary turnaround in the behaviour of both players. Perhaps it was always in them. Perhaps it was always there, just waiting over the last 10 years to come out. I think many of my friends who I thought were reasonable people have hit their 50s and turned into just horrible, selfish pricks. Um, not many have been selfish, horrible pricks and then turned into nice people, but that can happen too. So it's weird that they both, they've almost crossed over. It could all, we could almost call me one, me two, and me one, me two, me one. That's how far it's gone. But I don't want to get too confusing for you. What it means is here in the Salvio Dino arena, which I'm sure it will always be from now on, me one has equalised. It's 49 frames all. It's a clear win. Could easily have been a draw, but it's become a clear win. Um, very all these are 64, 44, 43, 42, 55, 41. It's fairly consistently the similar scores. Could have gone either way. Um, and I'm gutted for me too. He's, he's left the studio. I, he had a tear in his eyes as he went. Um, I hope he can get through this. I really do. It's The sport means so much to him. More than me one. It means to me one. I think me one has a, has other stuff in his life. Uh, me too needs this. It's like him. It's like me in a pointless trophy. That's, the, that's why I think I like me too. I mean no. He is half of me. And me one is also half of me. But fuck. What a... I hate that prick, that half of me. And I should like him, it's the decent side, it should be the decent side of me. I'm very confused about who to support out of me, one and me two and me and all the other me's as well, because I like some of those as well. I'm very confused about a lot of things. I feel like, you know, some of this is crazy, isn't it? I almost feel like I'm losing my mind at times with this. Anyway, we'll be back next Monday with self-playing snooker. Wednesday, we are, tomorrow I'm doing Stevie Martin's channel. Wednesday, I am interviewing um, Rahela Stapa, Maria Konnikova, on uh, 3 p.m. UK time. 10 a.m. New York time, I believe, when where she will be. Uh, and she's very interesting if you're interested in the psychology of sport, which is what this is all about. I mean, I should get her to watch this before she interview, before the interview, <laughs> so she can do uh, do some psychology. I'll definitely talk about self playing snooker to her. Um, and uh, Thursday, Ali and Herring's Twitch of fun with Ali, probably a bit me one ish. I think at the after his success on stage, made me look foolish. Took me down. It's like going on stage with your own heckler. I mean, who wants that? Terrible. Uh, please support the Kickstarter if you can. Let's see if we've... This stream of hundreds of people here watching. Let's see how many of you have been tempted into sponsoring an episode. It would be great if we'd hit the target, wouldn't it, during this time. Then we could all just relax. Oh, it's gone up a little bit. So 279. I think we've got one person has donated. 11 people to 300 backers. Uh... We need to get to 16,500 by Wednesday evening if you want to hear me read you some of Everything Happens for No Reason to find out what all the fuss is about. Uh, thank you very much uh, to Steve Brads, who's been doing the moderating today. Thank you very much to Andy McH. Fine work on the scoreboard. Thank you very much to Chris Evans, not that one, for popping in to help us with the sound issues. And I uh, hope it didn't spoil your enjoyment too much. He will also be putting that up online. He's a great guy. I won't hear a word said against him. Anyone who criticize him is criticizing me leave him out leave him alone thanks for watching guys i'm off to have some fun and uh relax and chillax back on wednesday afternoon take care of yourself and each other goodbye